Hey, Clayton. Hey, well, guys. Hi there, Tony. Everybody. Oh, didn't see you there. <laughs> oh, snuck in. On, wow. Somebody snuck once, in on us. Somebody once said that Clayton had a dry sense of humor. Oh, yeah. I felt that was pretty spot on. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. I didn't see you over there. Uh, yeah. How you doing on a Friday? Not too bad. It's been a really busy out if morning. I want to sit down or stand up. Yeah, you're acting kind of awkward. Don't do this to me. <laughs> no, it's been a really busy morning. As you can see, I just finished painting the edges of our our parts here. Are you saying I shouldn't touch them? <clears throat> I think they should be dry. We okay. blow we blow dry them. We're gonna see. Hopefully, they the paint sticks on there while we tr start to assemble this thing. But yeah, you guys finally talked me into doing the beer caddy, huh? Well, we did it a while back. What was it? It was before the pandemic, 2019, it was a while maybe. Back. It was probably three years ago, yeah. So we we did it, and we're like, oh, this is really cool. We should do something with it, and then we didn't. But now right. we're gonna do something else with it. This pattern has been public on the Glowforge forum, right? Uh, I believe so. That is. <laughs> That's the right. only place that it's been public. Other than that, we really haven't done anything with the pattern. Um, it's kind of a neat pattern. Like you said, I designed it about three, three and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You'll have to link that video that we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was yeah, right around that time. There. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so now we're going to put one together in a live format. There you go. We got all the pieces lasered out. Um, when we first did the first one that's over there, we uh, did one of these, yeah. lasered it all out, but it was all one piece of leather. This one we have, what do you have? You have buffalo. So yeah, I did. I, on this one, I just decided to do a two-ply. So I went ahead and glued two layers of leather together, and we cut it out. And so we've got our vintage tan buffalo on the front. And then this is some premium heavyweight upholstery on the back. Okay. Um, I just thought it was kind of a cool contrast. Do a nice black and tan beer caddy. There you go. Yeah. We got a black and tan bundle that you can get. Yeah. Right? I don't think it has these two leathers in it. I meant to pick up a six pack on the way to work so that we'd have something to, to put in it when we're done. Well, you guys wait right here. We'll be back. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> we'll, we'll go grab one. We'll send Andy six pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Craft, please. Um, craft, craft soda, right? Man, I just realized I'm missing a couple parts still. They're probably still hanging up on my wall drying. Good. Well, that'll be about how we've been par for the course yeah. for the videos. Andy, Melissa. <laughs> oh, there goes Holly. <laughs> They're hanging up with binder clips on the wall. I had to raise the camera up because you're so tall. So the camera, so you didn't get cut off. I guess it's been a minute, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to that. It's when a I, different view from up there. When I brush my teeth in the morning, I can't see my head in the mirror. It just cuts you right off at the forehead? Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, where where do we have to go? So we I'll put the um, link for the beer caddy that's up there. I have to I have to find it again. It's probably in the other video that we did. The link to the pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll I'll resend you the the uh, the file as well because I did update it just a smidge. So you could do it on the Glowforge, but you could also print it out and just cut it out yourself. You could. You could. Okay. The pattern I've got drawn out. The Glowforge. Uh, the average. The bed on the Glowforge is a twelve inch by twenty inch. And so the pattern I have drawn out on the, f the file is actually uh, on 12 by 20 sheets of leather. Okay. Right? Um, so yeah, like I said, we originally did this to, to be able to cut out on the Glowforge. You could hand cut it out by all means. A little bit of a pain, but uh, you know what? It's Leathercraft. We're all, we're all gluttons for punishment. That's right. Uh, so it looks like we probably have all of our parts. We're gonna figure that out pretty quick. So we've got the leather we have here, and then what other parts do you need to put this together? Right, so the leather, this pattern is designed to be used with uh, like about eight to 10 ounce weight leather. Uh, the two layers I've got combined here are total about eight ounce. Uh, we've got some one inch unwelded round rings, uh, item number 5-120401. And then I've got some bag feet. Uh, didn't grab the item number for this, uh, but your basic brad style bag feet, they need to be a little bit tall and you'll see You'll see why. Um, and then some large double cap rivets. Don't need a sewing machine. Um, that's all your hardware and leather. Besides that, the tools are pretty minimal as well. We're gonna smash our rivets flat with a hammer. I've got a stitching groover and a V-gouge. Really, you just need a V-gouge if you're good enough with it. Um, a couple tools that are really helpful for cutting this thing out. Is if you're hand cutting it, something like a single chisel a single prong chisel for cutting out a lot of these square slots. Mm. Or you could use a slot punch if you've got one the right size. And then these little corner tools are really handy. They fit really perfect on the profiles. These little, uh, the corner profiles here, uh, cutting out. You can see that overhead camera. Yeah. So the corner profiles like on, on the edges, 
even cutting out around uh, this slot right here, mm -hmm. that fits that profile perfectly. These small corner rounders are, are really handy. Nice. Uh, it doesn't need to be two ply. The first one that we did, the first two that we did, were out of single ply. Yeah, so this one's single ply. This is using our natural harness. Yeah, let's see. And it's it comes to us at an eight to 10 ounce, I believe. So you can see there's the... You can see the rough out in there. Yep. The flush side. And they, they still come out really nice. You get a nice finished front. And the back really doesn't look too bad as well. Um, what else do we talk about? So uh, the only other thing that's kind of weird about this, is, or what what you might struggle with, is is the yeah. dowel handle. This is actually, does, the dowel is designed, or the handle is designed to have these little eighth inch channels on either side, or maybe about 3 sixteenths. And so this dowel rod is a three quarter inch uh, diameter dowel rod. It's cut at nine and a quarter inches long, and then those channels are inset by a, a half an inch on center, right? And so it doesn't have to be done on a lathe like this one that was done and channeled out all the way around. You could just cut or sand or file out straight channels on either side, and we'll show you how this fits in here in a minute. Nice. Other than that, I'll get you a pair of pliers to bend out these rings, and we should be good to start. Let's putting it together. Put huh? it together. Uh, so did I, do you have a glue eraser? Cause I've got a few parts that maybe oh, you sure, can help Clayton. me, help there's, me clean up. There's very few things that we have, but we got things to clean, clean up stuff. Perfect. If you don't remember when you dumped the glue all over the table, I had to get a glue eraser. Oh, good. All right. So first thing I'm going to do, I am actually going to, uh, use my stitching groover and V gouge, and I'm going to actually gouge out a couple places on these parts, uh, just to make these bend a little bit easier. Well, a lot a bit easier because they're going to have to make some pretty tight 90 degree corners. Uh, so it's going to be on this part, that part you've got in your hand, and then across the bottoms of these. So these are going to be folding in about a half an inch. So we're going to mark a line first. I don't know, maybe that camera three, what it can see instead of seeing the back of your head. <laughs> you just got to let me know, man. I'll lean back. No, you're good. Oh yeah, we still got some wet edges here. We were in a hurry this morning, guys. Yeah, look at that, I'm scraping paint off it. Uh, we're gonna roll with it though. We'll pretty it back up later. So I'm just marking a half inch in on these three edges. Can we try to hair dryer some glue? How's everybody doing? Ryan Bain, I missed it, but is this pattern available? It is available. There's the old video when we did kind of, it wasn't a tutorial, we just built built this. I gotta go dr grab the file, and if Clayton has changed it any, then we uh, will we'll put it back in the description. All right, so I'm doing something a little bit different on these. You'll notice I'm, uh... I'm going to make this cat beer caddy. It's it's black, black and tan. So I'm going to make it to where one side is going to be black and the other side is going to be tan, which is why I'm going to be skiving on opposite sides of the leather on these parts. Yeah, so we have, uh, let's see, we have one side that looks like that and one side that looks like that. All right. All right, so the reason I got a stitching groover here is, honestly, I'm not super great cutting a straight line with a V gouge. So actually, I, I like to go across it first with a stitching groover and kind of get a, a trough started. And then you're able to go back and follow it with, uh, with your V-gouge. So we're going to cut fairly deep at least probably halfway through the thick total thickness of this leather and it's really going to help this thing bend quite a bit. Have we we put one together was a two ply, didn't we? This one's two ply. Yeah. And that was a kind of a prototype prototype
Oh, this squishy leather's gonna be difficult. So if everybody enjoys this one, do you think I'll be able to talk you into doing the other ones that we've talked about? For your bike, for the little bike carriers? Oh my gosh. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. You want a bicycle carrying beer caddy or growler, growler, growler caddy? Yeah. Got Chad checking in. We had. Did you see that we had Norway checking in? Uh-uh. And then Nebraska checking in. Now we got Jasper, Missouri. Nice. Yeah. Worldwide, Clayton. Worldwide. I don't know if you knew that about SLC Live. I didn't know that. Yeah. Super impressed with you, Tony. Hey, I appreciate that, Clayton. <laughs> don't say it too loud, otherwise it'll make my head bigger than it needs to be. <laughs> Chomp through that a little bit more this time with that one. Yep. So we're gonna go. We're pretty much going all the way through this this top layer, the premium heavy chap. I, yeah. I had it split down to about two and a half ounce. Gotcha. Total, of this thing is about eight ounces in thickness. Where's my line out there? The amazing JP said, "Growler caddy." Growler caddy. See? Yeah. Uh, I got ten ounces on this. About ten ounces. Yeah. This cool gauge that you got us in here. You know, we do have, we have that, um, what, tie and timber place that's not far away from here. We could ride our bicycles to work. Well, I guess I could ride my bicycle to work. You could, too. It'd just be a long It'd ride. It'd be a long ride. <laughs> <laughs> you could just hook onto one of those trucks and just grab like they did on Back to the Future and just have somebody pull you in. Just sketch it on. Yeah. Come on in. Troughs cut just a little bit deeper. I bet even with this one, you could take it and you could make it to be a hanger on your on your bicycle. You could, yeah. Where that tiny timber place is, it's right in the middle of a neighborhood. I'm sure they got a lot of local neighbors coming over to visit that probably ride their bikes. Ride their bikes and need a way to carry their. Well, that's definitely the vibe spirits of spirits that, that neighborhood. Home. Molly says, we have some parking lot ice rinks going on in northern Indiana. <laughs> nice. Trying to stay upright. <laughs> well, throw a puck out on the ground, and at least when you hit the ground, you could say it was because somebody checked you. Hmm. <laughs> Uh-oh. There goes our, our bottom layer. You know what? I'm just going to pull it off. Will that make it easier? Off. Will that make you an easier fold? I thing? think it'll be fine. Wow. I'm not going to do that on the sides, though. Modifications as we work. That's like the whole of leather crafting. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be all right losing that layer of leather right there because that's going to get, actually get covered up in the bottom of the case. All right, so those will flex a lot easier, fold in and allow themselves to be riveted. Let's go ahead and do these parts. Again, we're just going across the bottom of the, the sides of the uh, this caddy, and then we're going to do all three sides on another piece. This looks a little more like a dull buffalo than I remember some of that classic buffalo that's shiny. Mm -hmm. Did you do something to it to yeah. make it? After it was laser engraved, it gets real charred. Mm -hmm. You know, it gets a lot of that, that black char on the face of it. So I went back and cleaned it with liquid saddle soap and that kind of knocks down some of the sheen. I really like the look of, of it. Yeah. Kind of dulls it out a little What's bit. What's the official name of this that I'm I can't think of it. What, the vintage tan buffalo? Vintage tan yeah. buffalo. So if you got it and you hit it with some liquid saddle soap or even probably the paste saddle soap to knock that sheen down, it kind of gives you a whole different style. Paul says, Mankato, Minnesota. Watching, I had a guy asking for these for one of these bicycles, for his bicycle. I, I think you could take this and add some extra straps on the top where you could hang it 
from your bicycle on this yeah. one on that dowel rod. Absolutely. Make sure you can just snap it right off. Oh, get you some, yeah, get you some line 24 snaps on there. All right, some pull the dot snaps maybe. So oh, there like you one. go. Extra security for your, your six pack. You don't want to have a party foul on the bicycle. They probably won't let you come to the party anymore if you drop the six pack on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, Ryan says, unrelated to this build, I bought some Python on the last live sale. Does that need a top coat or a finish on it? No, I, almost all the Python that we ever sell is going to be already finished. And I think the Python that Ryan actually got was um, that garment type of Python that's even a little bit thicker than... Have you even seen any of that? Mm-mm. Okay, well, I'm out of the loop, man. Well, let me not explain it to you. I'll just show you a piece of it. There you go. Now you can be more educated with. Oh, nice. Pretty nice stuff. Yeah, real soft, beautiful skin. No, I don't think it'd need a top coat or a finish on it. It's not gonna. That's not gonna take moisture. Yeah. Very kind of finished. Heavy. Got a really nice feel to it. What kind of plans does everybody have this weekend? Any, any plans <laughs> any this plans? weekend? Well, I gotta come into work tomorrow. Well, that's a plan. Yeah, that's a plan. Yeah. And then I'm off next week. Oh, that must be why you're coming in tomorrow? Uh, no, well, we have a Saturday rotation to have someone in the shop. And so about every two and a half months, I gotta work a Saturday. It's really not too bad. Yeah. It's nice working when there's nobody here. What are you trying to say? <clears throat> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, Christina says if you put a little Angela satin on, or she put a little Angela satin on the Python wallet that she said, and it makes it sh makes it a little shiny. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you can. It doesn't Plus, need help. it, but you certainly can. Yeah, if you put that on there, it'll give you an makes it a little bit easier to clean if you do have to clean it if you got an acrylic finish over the top of it. Yeah, I would definitely avoid um, finishing it very heavily, though. Right. So spray it on if, if possible. Otherwise, your scales Otherwise will no longer be malleable. It's going to change the feel of it, yeah. yeah. All right. Let me get through that boring part there. Yeah. I've got Vinny mostly trying to hold the trash can up as he flicks stuff off on the floor. I'm a little bit tougher case. Yeah. No, uh, Dean, not Herman Oak. No mm -hmm. Herman Oak on this build. Buffalo and then uh, a heavyweight biker chap? It's the premium heavy chap, and yeah. the reason I chose it is because it's got a, a real heavy pebble grain, mm -hmm. and I kind of like the contrast of the textures. Yeah. But really, I mean, there's... The uh, the premium heavy chap didn't really add anything structurally to the build. I really just chose it for the aesthetics. And this buffalo, once you get down past the finish on it, is a veg. Uh, yeah, I think the buffalo is technically a a veg tan, a finished veg. Yeah. Yeah, looks very vegetable tanned. All right, so we'll kind of train these inwards like this. And the next step is going to be we're going to start with our bottom. I guess I could have been putting feet on that, mm -hmm. I could, or I could have been doing something. You could have been I'm doing holding anything. this. Anything. I am. I'm talking, asking about what everybody's weekend, what they're doing this weekend. I found out that Clayton is working and it's better air. when nobody else is here. Oh, there won't be dead air. I can fix that. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and. Oh, actually, hold on a second. We're gonna wait to put feet on that until after we riveted it. I remember this from last time I did it. I put feet on before, and it just makes it just a little bit tougher to get the rivet set. Yeah, because it's trying to flop in from where the feet are. Yep. So like I said, I'm going to try and make this caddy to where we got black on one side and tan on the other. Okay. So the way we're going to do this, these are going to get riveted on like so. Make sense? So we're going to go through and use large rivets to stick all this together. This bad boy does need to be flipped over. 
There's a lot of rivets on this thing. And this piece just sits in on the floor of it? Oh, uh, yeah. That'll to cover up your other. Okay. Yep. Once this goes together, that'll sit on there and cover up a lot of your rivets and make the bottom look nice and finished. Well, ding up the bottom of your bottles. Exactly. So let's go ahead. Yeah, Chad, who had commented from Jasper, he's going to be coming in uh, for Denny's tooling class. So you'll get to see him this weekend, too. Nice. Yeah. So there will be people here this weekend. Great. Sorry, sorry for that, Clayton. <laughs> now you can look at me working over at my desk. Just look at him. Just, yeah. Just stare at him. <laughs> Cleaning and prepping for the baby. The baby. Yeah, I'm done with that. I already have my babies. Yep. Mine are 13 and 6. Oh, you're nearing the end. I have four legs and a tail. <laughs> yeah. Hollies have legs and tails. Uh, I don't know if I can say that chaotically. There is a very large game that probably could be playing this weekend. Uh, I, some people might watch it with a bowl in their hand, maybe a soup bowl in their hand. Could be any kind of bowl. Yeah, they could be any kind of bowl that they want to use. Uh, a super special bowl that they really like. Yeah. Yeah, maybe somebody made it for them. Holly, you got any super special bowls? Um, Abigail does, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there a way to search our orders for stuff? What does that mean? Is there a way to search our orders for stuff? Like when it'll arrive? What are you wanting to search, Angela? Yeah. That will be, I'll be able to better answer your question. And if you can't search it, you can call us and we should be able to help you. Well, there is a way, there is a way to search it. There is also a way to reorder items that you have ordered. What really needs to happen is that I need to make a new update to the... I did a, a video on, on the website, the new website, but there's a few things that you can do more now on the website. So now I need to make another video and explain that. Please remind me of all the liquids you used in this project? All the liquids. Um, so, uh, to clean it once it came off the laser, I cleaned the vintage tan buffalo, uh, getting all that black char off with liquid saddle soap uh, and just like a shearling pad. And then on the edges, we went back and we painted the edges with a matte black finici. Mm -hmm. And then the glue the between gluing the two pieces on? Yep, we Masters, use... Barge, in the shop. Everybody should know by now we use Van Grip in our shop. Right. Pretty similar to all-purpose Barge or Masters, just a solvent-based cement. You could use something like Rinia if you don't like the, the fumes. What number are the feet? Well, Beth, I will have to look in the catalog for that. And hopefully they're in the catalog, and hopefully I can find them. Think it'll be with hardware? Yep. What seemed like a logical Should place in the to back put them? feet section? Oh my goodness. Hello! The long lost traveler. He almost got lost. I, well, I wasn't lost. We knew right where I was stranded. <laughs> I knew right where I was at. Wherever you're at, there you are. <laughs> Good, we didn't have to put up with him for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that because I know he's out, of, he's out of earshot now. Hmm. I see lots of spikes and spots, but I don't see those bag feet, Clayton. Really? Yeah. Don't you the catalog guru? No, nope, I didn't. Website guru. I didn't do this catalog. This wasn't my doing. Well, there we go for bag feet. 
we're using the nickel plated one. So in your catalog, or if you have the, if you go to the digital version of the catalog, it's on page 276. And these are 5 8 inch diameter bag feet. We're using nickel plated. And I'll give you the 12 pack of them. 020-150-31. There you go. So we'll just insert our bag feet. Six of them on these holes. One to hold up each beer. So if you bought a 12 pack, you could make two. Right? Perfect. And have enough feet. That's all I'm worried about is having enough feet. <laughs> is that a concern? <laughs> yeah. Not anymore. Hey, honey. Yes? Um, we don't sell Kenichi uh, stickers in our Die, but we have the water stain on the website. Charlie was asking. Oh, Sorry. yes, the Fenichi water stain is a dye. You might have known yeah. Fenichi water stain by something that's also very eco friendly and also with a great flow from other companies that might call it in that order. Ryan said he's going to get caught up on leather orders. He's at home down with the sickness. Down with the sickness? Christina's down going to cut and sew a leather purse this weekend. And Charles says, have y'all... I can't read the rest of it. <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to remember. Is it easier to... might be easier to uh, rivet this handle on before we go to assemble. It's my own fault of why I can't read it. Yep, <laughs> oh, what did Charles? You deleted all of Charles. What did Charles ask? Hit Control Z. Uh, question that Holly asked you about. Yeah, I, oh, I, Ch hey, Charles, Charles. Charles, I, have it. I linked um, a skew for you, so you can go into the website, type in that skew, and it'll bring up a water stain. Okay. Or just type in Fenichi, and it'll pull up all the Fenichi items. All right, which I'm I think go ahead is rivet these handle loops over. Fee nice. Fee nice. Fee nice. Fee nice. And so I'm going to actually do one going one way and then the other opposite. Yes. Oh, so you can get some black and tan up there too. And that way it's symmetrical. Should carry straight. Uh, Chad, if you've paid for your other thing, I'll take it back by um, Denny's area for you to pick up tomorrow. All right, we got those. Don't need the handle yet. That's basically the last thing that goes on. All right, well, I'll just continue to hold it and keep it warm. So at this point, we're gonna go through and we're gonna start doing, we'll go ahead and rivet the sides. Uh, we'll actually wait on the divider. So this is probably the most challenging part of this project is actually getting these sides folded up and riveting these corners together, right? So I think usually what works best for me is going to be going through and riveting the top first and then we'll go back and we'll see if we can get the bottom corner. The bottom corners are just just kind of a bear. Are you going to do this on this handy dandy stand you brought? Man this thing is handy for sure. This little cobbler's shoehorn here on the stand. If you got anything like this to kind of get down inside of it and get it riveted that's going to be really helpful. I'm just going to kind of smash those guys flat. So the one that you did your V-gouge on is the one that's tucked behind and folding? Correct. Okay. Like I said, this is the most painful part of this whole project is fighting with these rivets. Any thoughts of putting together an Orion sample pack? Breaking them down into like two ounces of each color and selling a set? I can't remember. Do we do we pour Orion or does it come to us already packaged? Um, most of our stock came to us already packaged. I think we do have the capability to pour. We bought it, buy it in, uh, I think at least liter size. Liter. And break it down. But yeah. So it's a possibility. I can't be the one that brings it up though, because every time I bring it up, people think I'm crazy. Maybe it's the ideas that I bring that are crazy. 
Yeah, that's you're getting you're catching on. <laughs> that's not that I bring the ideas, that's what I bring as an idea. Why is the brown up on one side and black on the other? Well, because that is the style that's, choice. That's the design choice, yeah. That was the style choice that Clayton made. You don't My have to fault. make the same choices. And you don't even have to use rivets on it, Dean. You could use zippers on yours if you wanted. <laughs> Dean really likes zippers, so he could... <laughs> Zip it up? Yeah. That would be pretty sweet. I'd like to see that. It sounds like the amazing JB and Idaho Cowgirl need to get in touch. Mm -hmm. She's working on a backpack slash diaper bag. Oh, nice. And JB's getting set for a baby, if I remember right. Yes. The Amazing Jr. Oh, there you go. Love these double cap rivets. Pretty simple to use, and you're setting them like how I like to set them. Flat. Smash them. One, one less setter to lose. Yeah, one big goal in designing this project was don't have to use a sewing machine. Honestly, since I did this one two ply, any, anytime I glue two layers of leather together, I like to be able to stitch around it and make sure the layers aren't going to come apart. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we're going to omit that on this project. That should be fine. Honestly, these were glued together pretty well. And with both of them being pretty dry leathers, I think they're going to stick just fine. Well, we got one side on. Yep. One to go. That's not too bad. This one's cooperating well enough. I definitely have struggled with some in the past, trying to get that bottom rivet in there. So as the um, saddle soap, the liquid saddle soap that you use, is that what you usually use to clean up the soot on the side of the laser? Or I know um, we use Big Four... Over there, There's as big well. one, big one a lot. Big one, the cleaner, and okay. then we'll big for it to get some moisture back into it and condition it. Um, those work well. I just, I don't know. Lately, I've been using the liquid setting soap a lot more. Then he must be talking to you. Yeah, he has. Ryan, they are not. What? Ryan wants to know if all the quotes from yesterday's live shopping are done. Mm. They are not. I don't know what this guy's been doing all day. Uh, putting them in. There's just... It's just a lot. We ended up selling 52 sides of veg tan. Nice. Yeah. So it was a... a minute to get all that in. All right, all right. Don't be so defensive. I can show you how to do it, and then you can see how long it takes if you want. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna stay out of the live sale thing. That's you and Liz. Yeah, except for she's been hanging out in different cities. Right. So it's been Holly and I. Yep. I think Holly and I have done it more together in 2022 than Liz and I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good for you guys. <laughs> you're keeping keep, it, you're keep keeping it, it in the marketing room. I know. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna let Liz try to steal my baby from that. That was my crazy idea. <laughs> She can try all she wants, but it's going to be a fight. She's going to have to fight me for it. <laughs> Two more rivets. How many rivet total rivets did we do? Did you count? Mm, nope. What is it? Three times One, four two, is three. twelve. Yeah. So three times five. It's going to be 15 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. So 25 rivets. 25 rivets. What a great number. 26, 27. Dang it. <laughs> and then three to spare because you might mess some up. So that's 30 total rivets you should probably get for this project. Probably at least a 30 pack. <laughs> I don't rivets. think we have a 30 pack. No, we don't. <laughs> you have more of that heavy bed, right? Uh, should have got it back. Chevy guy was asking if we have more of that skirting veg that Denny's been using. He's 
said you better not have sold all that heavy bag. Well, if I, I, I'm glad that you told me who it was for. So yes, we are sold out of it. <laughs> uh, Ryan wants to know if he got one of those foil-looking sides. It's killing him. Did you see that import skirting that we were doing? Mm -mm. So, Denny and I did rifle scabbards, but this was an import veg, and I was like, how does it tool on? He's like, I don't know, I've never tried to tool on it, but. Hey, yeah, that looks beautiful. Yeah. It tooled pretty well. Yeah. So that was the 1985-01. Uh, looks nice. really good. It's the closest that I've seen to an import kind of finishing out closer to a color of what the Herman Oak does. Chevy guy said, well, maybe Candy has some left for me. Wow. Ooh. Good Dang, luck. That was quick. Good luck. Yes, we had, uh, I think we had 370 of those sides total. Oh, here, let me switch this camera. Yeah. I feel like we need a new angle. Well, I'm almost done with this part, so if I can just get this last rivet in there. All right. I can really see what I'm doing. You gonna do the rest of it on the table, or do you have to use your uh, other? Okay. Yeah. Last rivet. All right. All right. Got it all riveted together. We got a we got a nice box going here. And kind of train the leather and get it a little more square. Yes, Chevy, we do. Um, at the at our other location, it said we had over three hundred sides of it. So, all right. So this is where some of the fun stuff kind of starts to come in. Granite out of the way. We're not going to need it. Let's see, Ryan. Let me look right quick on our spreadsheet to see if you got one of those foil ones. You sure did. Sure did. Shows that you were number 11. All right. So we've got our divider here. I'm wanting to make this, like I said, to where it looks black on one side, tan on the other. Right? That's the idea. So we're going to take our center divider and then put our two subdividers onto it. Make sure I orient these correctly. These are gonna go this way. Gotta stick with the color scheme. And this layer of leather should fit right down into that slot. So it should hold on there just like that. Well, like I said, this part can get kind of tricky. You gotta get all these kind of these parts together without it falling apart on you. So you get those on there. And then you're going to take your bottom, your in interior bottom liner, and it's going to go on this bottom slot. Just like that. So this is kind of your interior caddy assembly. Alright, makes sense. Tan from that way. Tan. Black from black. That way. Nice. Right? Oh, that's kind of cool. Kind of cool, right? You should have cut it that in half and. <laughs> shoulda, woulda, coulda. Right? You know what you can do with your shoulda, woulda, coulda's? Right. When is the pattern going to be available? I'll try to get it by the end of the day. Clayton, can we try to make that a thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got the, the AI file ready. You can just do your pretty it up a little bit and put it out there. Done. We'll, we'll give the end of the day a shot, and it'll be in the description up here. Um, all right, so then basically we're going to drop this in. Your bottom tab. Let's see if we can show you. Your bottom tab right here. You're going to go right through the bottom slot right there. And then obviously your side tabs right here. We're going to go into the side of the caddy here and here. All right, let's see how this goes with the color. Just like that. So then fishing this tab out through the bottom can be a little bit tricky. 
kind of make sure all your parts stay together as you stick it through there. Try to manhandle it a little bit. Grab you some duck bills. Can I do something to you may hold it in place as you? There we go. So we've got that guy started through there. And what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and actually stick a ring on that uh, to keep that in there. Is that you how you want keep it? You want it to stay put, you put a ring on it. Put a ring on it. You got to dance for us with that? <laughs> Did you hear what Latigo said? No, I didn't because it was in text and not out loud. Right. Latigo <laughs> said, I have a feeling that cardboard, I, excuse me. I have a feeling that a cardboard box would tool well for Denny. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's probably true. <laughs> All right, so this is a closure system I came up with. Um, I saw some similar um, construction styles online, not necessarily beer caddies, but other leather projects, where you can use like small bits of wooden dowels, wooden pins, and stick them through here like that to, to fix them. Oh, yeah. I figured out if you get our one inch uh, unwelded round ring, I've got the pattern drawn just right to where the space between the holes is perfect. Where what we're going to do is we're going to split this ring to a pair of pliers. Split it out just a little bit like that. And then you can actually rotate it through with some difficulty. Now, if you're using a leather that scratches really easily, you want to be careful doing this because the ends of this ring will scratch your leather pretty good. So, get your ring through there. And then the other tricky part is actually grabbing the two ends and bending it back straight. Marcus said, nice. put a ring on it. Leonard Skinner playing in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. All right, so then we got this mess of an inside that's all stuck together in here. And we're going to start sticking our tabs through the sides. Stick some rings through there. Put some more rings on it. I saw a funny rock shirt. It was, you know, the big, huge rocks that we have, and it's um, got all the crystals in it. Mm -hmm. There's a woman standing there, and she goes, Yeah, I love it, but how do we put it on a ring? <laughs> it's just <laughs> a massive rock. It's huge amethyst geode or something. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't seem like Andy went to Casey's. What are you talking about? Uh, to finish off our caddy. Oh. oh, didn't go get us any beer, huh? Mm -mm. Or soda pop. What are those Mexican sodas that, you know, they come in like pineapple flavor or... Oh, yeah. I ask you to pronounce that. Oh. I can picture it. It's a clear bottle with a white label. Green writing. Yeah. Is this sarsaparilla? It's not. No. But good try. Brand, there's a brand <laughs> like Juanita's or something. Oh, they, I think that's, yeah, something close like that, yeah. Sarsaparilla? Come on. Yeah, I thought that's what they call it in Mexico. I need to punch through. Yeah, a rotary punch. Where are we at here? Where we get it with that. Got one. Oh, did it not punch all the way through? It's kind of holding me up here. Well, rotary right, punch isn't going to get it either. I found it. I'm going to butcher it. Okay. Jitaros? Jaritios? Yeah. Close Sorry. enough. Waritos? Waritos? That's what somebody said. Berrino. Berrino. Yes, that's what this is for. Yes. It Mexican soda pop. Oh, a daiquiri. <laughs> That's what Charlie said. Charles. P Pina colada. Pina colada. So, uh, <laughs> you guys want to hear a story of my younger day? No. 
Okay. <laughs> Uh, we were going on a school field trip, and we were going to a Mexican restaurant because it was a Spanish class. So we had a menu that we were going to pre-order with. Uh-huh. And I said, what's a dequery? And my teacher goes, oh, no, you can't have that. That's a dequery. <laughs> a dequery. What's a dequery? <laughs> Kevin likes to order his lunch in Spanish when we go to our local establishment across the street. He certainly frequents it enough. Mm-hmm. He should. He knows the menu. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's get the other side done real quick. Awesome. Thank you. Someone needed to say something. I think this is the first video in a while we haven't used a sewing machine. I know, right? I like these projects. They're easy for beginners to get into. I mean, this one's... It seems a little bit involved, but overall it's pretty simple, I feel like. Come out with a really cool looking product. Let's see, this this is a great project, uh, GM says, but he would redesign it to make it a little bit or uh, bigger to use for a tool tote. Mm, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Do it, man. Do it. Make it bigger, leave the maybe the all the inside pieces out. You'd have to find a way to make your I want a divider. Okay, I'm gonna just snap the roll top on it too. Did you? Snap Sound some of the like... Oh, the, the finish. chrome finish. Yeah, if you bend them too fast or too or too far, some of that chrome plating will start to snap off. But really, it's it's pretty chrome underneath too. So it looks that way. It'll be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and bend out the four that I need. Fanta was also a very popular one. There you the go. The strawberry Fanta. Fanta. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> Sorry if that whistle was loud, but that stuff is good. <laughs> Still is. It, yes, also correct. <laughs> <laughs> you got another one with trouble, Clayton? No. Oh, okay. I'm fine. Just you. Twist and pull. Yeah, sometimes going through the back of these are... Bit of a bar. I wonder if we could cut the parts out of veg and have Denny tool one up. Would it, would it mold around if you yeah. put your beers in it? Yeah, we could do one out of veg. I'd probably line it with something finished. Like a pink um, suede or something? Or just resist the inside, you know, finish the inside with something like resiline and acrylic finish. Would pig suede be enough to keep it off the veg? Probably. I wouldn't recommend storing your beer in one of these. Yeah, but I mean, I could see right. it getting a little wet with condensation. It should be fine. Yeah. If you just do it all like a single ply piece of edge, I would definitely uh, try to treat the inside a little bit. That way, the water doesn't soak through super fast. Yeah. I think I was talking. I went out there to retail this morning, and I grabbed this display piece. Mm-hmm. And uh, several of the retail associates were like, "Man, are you guys doing a pattern for that?" Finally, it's like we got customers that want to do that project all the time. We don't have anything for them, so I think they'll be pretty excited if we can get a a printed pattern out for sale. Well, now we got a video for instructions. Exactly. They can learn about what kind of soda they can put in it, Fanta or whatever the other one was. Check the live chats Boritos. for <laughs> check the live chats for the spelling. <laughs> yeah. All right, then we gotta do the sides, and we're about to wrap it up. It's not, like I said, it's really not too bad. The longest part of this project is really gonna be cutting out your pieces. Whether you cut it out with your hands or you use a laser. If you got a laser engraver, man, it's it's not too bad. It's pretty quick. Did we do this one on the Glowforge? I know we did. The first one we did was on the Glowforge. We didn't cut this one on the Glowforge, no. Yeah, but you can. Hmm. Hmm. I was trying to remember what we had for videos next week. Not me. Hopefully Liz is back next week. I'm sure she's supposed to do something. Yeah, she's supposed to be back. I'm going to be going on vacation. I'm going yes. fishing. 
at least one day. <laughs> Let me look at the calendar. Two things left on there. Jeez, man. Denny was going to do some spats, which I need to remind him about, and Liz was going to do a wide belt, kind of a pattern that she. Mm, yeah, the fashion belt. Or a, yeah, that belt that she had seen, and she wanted to make something. That's right. Similar. So this one's definitely a, a little bit softer than like these other two that I did over here. Yeah. The natural harness, and then that the Herman Oak bridle. I What'd you know. do to yourself? I don't know where it's coming from. Hmm. Well, they don't bleed on the leather, I guess. Well, Liz has done it, so... Did you pinch yourself with your pliers? No. Hit yourself with a ring? Maybe one of the rings or something. Hmm. Sorry about that, Clayton. No, yeah, it's okay. I forgive you. Maybe you pulled a hangnail. Maybe that was what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple more rings to go. I think we'll make it. I've, uh, sometimes I don't have such good luck with my fingers. It's funny when you can cut yourself with a circle. Are you telling me to do <laughs> split bean Tyrion? Yeah, Terry Beeson. They said, oh, I picked up my order and had a little something extra in there. Andrew and I figured that Chad and Tony gave me a free gift. So thanks, Tony. What did I give him? Oh, you didn't say. You're welcome. I don't even know what it was. Maybe somebody else's order fell into your box and you just... Stole somebody else's piece of their order. Hmm. <laughs> Stephanie, the files will be able to be used on your laser or to be printed out and cut out by hand. Hmm. I don't know what I did. It'll just be a PDF file, so you can pull them how you need to um, and then just arrange them on whatever program you use. Not quite a gusher of a cut there, but it sure is. Must be the pressure that you're putting when, the, when we got a bleeder. I, want to, I just don't want to get it all over the leather. Black, tan, and red. Right. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool to use a little wooden dowel thing that you were talking about to put in there. Little wooden dowels, yeah. Come on. Do I have to worry about that? Just got to get the right grip on it. It keeps slipping off. I hate it when that happens. What are you talking about? You haven't done anything this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been entertaining. Right. Tough job. <laughs> there we go. Oh, you know what? Charles is right. Denny started bleeding on Wednesday, too. Really? So we need Liz back so that everybody stops bleeding in the videos. <laughs> I must be the reason that everybody cuts herself. Oh, okay. Jerry said that it was the poster. Oh. Yeah. That was for you, Terry. It was on purpose. It was on purpose. Hey, I got something for you, Clayton. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, I like a dowel. All right, so we got our... I did this out of walnut, and then we just uh, stained it with, like, some black Phoebe's leather dye. Yeah. Of course. Hmm. So then this should slip right in. Leather dye on wood. Yeah. Hmm. Of course. And then this will fit right into those notches there. And there you have it. There's your six pack. Oh, looks like my handle's a little bit long. I need to maybe adjust that pattern out just a little bit. I'll shorten that up. There you have it. Oh, there we have it, man. Black on that side, spin it around. And now you got tan. What do you think? I think it looks pretty cool. You get the color scheme now? You understand what I was going for? I was with you the whole time. I okay. got what you were doing. All right. 
the yeah. viewers were questioning you, Clayton. Pretty neat. So the, the handles in the middle here kind of widen out so that you can fit your hand between it. And then uh, it's made to where this handle will go down so that it'll fit into the fridge. So it gets kind of tall once it's all the way up. Yeah. Just, yeah, just zoom in. There we go. There you go. I just, yeah. There you are. Yeah, like I was saying, handle will actually go down. And use a fold in. And you can fit it into your fridge. It'll be the same height as the bottles. Pop it up. There you go. You're ready to roll. Ready to rock. Easy peasy. Anybody got any other questions to, to pertaining to this or not pertaining to this? Just questions in general, comments on Tony's performance today. <laughs> My crafting abilities were... I didn't mess anything up. No, no, you did great. You got a 100% success, success rate. On all crafting that happened today, I was 100%. <laughs> is it 100% if there is zero attempts? Absolutely. Okay, well, I appreciate that, Clayton. I feel like with zero attempts, it's actually probably closer to zero percent. <laughs> blood equals a pay raise. Yeah, there you go. Well, we'll probably put it it's into... blood our, money. Yeah, we'll probably put it into our stash of uh, goodies that we've been making here on the videos, and we'll probably have another SLC trivia giveaway. Sure. I thought that was pretty fun. I don't know if you saw that. We had a... I'll, uh... We had a bunch of giveaways, and we asked questions, and then as people got them right, they got to pick gifts... Uh, a prize off the table of something that we'd crafted on a video. I'll look it over and try to sanitize it real good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Even three minutes to spare. Really? Is it not even noon yet? 11.58. Sweet. It's yeah. 12 o'clock somewhere. This is a pretty quick build. Like I said, the longest part is going to be cutting your parts out. That probably saved us to get it within an hour. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you want to, we'll probably just jump over to Twitch um, and hang out for a little bit on the after show. Chad was going to be doing some tooling that he had planned, but he, he blanked out on us, so it'll probably just be me telling dad jokes. <laughs> so be sure to switch on over, guys. <laughs> no, we'll look at some <laughs> we'll look at some other things. I got some hidden treasures under the table. Oh yeah? Yeah. Some secret leather stash? Well, just some just some other leathers that nice. might pop up on a live shopping but that's what we have uh next week denny will be back and liz will be back with a wide belt and spats you know what spats are nope cool we'll all learn together <laughs> all right you guys have a great weekend stay out of trouble eat soups and bowls enjoy uh other games that might be played mm -hmm. that have to do with soups and bowls for your children. reason yeah <laughs> all right see ya see you guys thanks <laughs>